Okay, so welcome to the ZMY Align class. Using a chair today and a blanket, if you have a hard chair, just for some cushion. And we're gonna start with putting our legs up on the chair. So basically this blanket is just to spread out on the chair so you're not hurting the creases of your knees and things like that. Yeah. Okay. And you want the legs to be against the wall or on the sticky mat just to secure it so it doesn't slide on you. Once you have that set up, just go ahead and lie down and have your knees bent on the chair. Just slide them through. So obviously this is similar to our Viparitsa Karani legs up the wall thing that we do. You can put your toes underneath the back of the chair. So it'll be a little, yeah, is that better? Okay. Yeah, no, no, no. Trust me, I do over explain in this class, <laughs> right, Alexa? I over explain, I over talk, and I make you stay in the pose the whole time. <laughs> so, you know, you can have your palms facing up, you can put your hands on your belly. And I'll invite you to close the eyes if you'd like to. You don't have to. But we can just turn that external stimulation off begin to focus inward. Anything that happened before you arrived in this class today doesn't exist anymore. And if it keeps coming to mind while you're lying here and, and maybe this is the first time today that you've been still, that your body has been still, that you've zoned in on your breath. So it's a good time for the mind to start being overactive. If that happens, just let it happen. Just observe and breathe. We're going to do a three part breath today, which is going to look like this on an inhale. You know, normally we do belly, chest, and then we exhale. We're gonna continue that wave up to the throat. Obviously your lungs do not go up to the throat, but it's another point of focus. So it will be on your inhale, belly, chest, throat, exhale. So you're just really, really deepening the breath. And then as you exhale, completely empty the lungs. And if at any time this breath makes you feel anxious, just stop doing it. You could take as many regular breaths in between as you like, but we're gonna do this for about a minute. We'll do a few more rounds here. Feeling everything expand, creating spaciousness within the body. and feeling the body actually shift into that rest and digest mode. I'll go ahead and return back to just regular breathing. Notice any differences in the breath from before doing the breathing practice. 
And if there is no changes, that's okay too. We're gonna take the feet and put them on the edge of the chair. So just move the legs here a little bit. Maybe bring the arms overhead for a stretch. And then go ahead and roll onto your side. Pause on your side just for a moment. Use your arm as a pillow. Hello. Do you think it's the air in here or is it like, oh. That was a good yawn then. Go ahead and push yourself up nice and slow. It wouldn't be the first time I saw someone cry in a yoga class or, the, you know, including myself. Go ahead and move your chair off to the side or just return to your mat. We're gonna go ahead and um, do fire log pose. So in this class, even though it's a little bit slow, we still do some poses that can be a little bit more intense. So bend the right knee. And then what we wanna do is stack the left ankle on top of the right knee and the left knee on top of the right ankle as much as possible. And if this is not accessible, that's fine. You could stick a block underneath the knee and the ankle, or you could put your foot on top of a block in front of the knee. Yes, so you would probably wanna put the, yeah, you can use both your blocks, yep. Yes, and is that okay for you? Good, keep both feet flexed to protect the knee joints. If this is good for you, just stay here. Otherwise you can bring your fingertips to the floor. You can start to walk the fingertips forward. Probably feeling it on the outside of the left leg. Yeah. Find your breath here, shoulders away from the ears, engage the shoulder blades. Keep the neck nice and long. Maybe you can go a little bit deeper or not. Just see where your edge is and honor that. You don't ever wanna cut yourself short as far as, you know, I've been doing this for, you know, six months and this is where I am. Maybe you can go a little bit further now. Just always wanna check that out. One more breath here. And then walk the hands towards the body. Begin to unravel the legs. We're gonna straighten the legs first and just kind of massage the kneecaps. And then Dandasana, so nice, tall torso, strong legs, feet are flexed. We're gonna take a few breaths here. So it feels like you're ripping the mat apart with your thighs. That's how we're engaging the legs here. So you're gonna feel the outer hips. If you have uh, weak hip joints in this area, you'll probably feel it here. How do you guys feel? Sometimes even today, even though I do a lot of work with my legs, I still feel sometimes like that spot wants to kind of give out. Do you feel it in your calf muscles? Okay, yeah, yeah, no, that's good. Okay, so now we're gonna fold forward. Uddiyana Banda. We talk about the bandhas a lot, right? We have the pelvic floor lift, um, which is different than just, you know, we're taking all four sides and energetically and, and just lifting everything up. Uddiyana Banda is, um, we're talking about Uddiyana Banda and Mula Banda. When we're talking about engaging the abdominals, the deep abdominals, like we talk about, the transverse abdominals, it's not just an abdominal engagement. We're actually kind of like scooping in and up to get this upward lift. So let's do that while we forward fold. So inhale in and up, kind of like caving out the belly and then begin to fold forward. Keep the legs engaged here. You can use a strap to bring it around the balls of the feet or you can just keep your fingertips on either side of the legs. The more you concave the belly and engage, the more you might be able to hinge forward. Keep the feet flexed and then bring the back muscles into it. So be aware of the muscles in the back of the body and use those to push yourself as well. Do you feel the difference when you use your back muscles? Yeah. So it's not just, oh, are my hamstrings long enough? We're using all of the muscles. 
We're gonna take three more breaths here. Those same slow steady breaths that we were taking with the legs up. If you can grab the feet without rounding the upper back, go ahead and do that, but it's not necessary. And then inhale, come all the way up. And now let's do the other side with a fire log pose. Bend the left knee. So we're looking for the shin to be parallel to the front of the mat, wherever the front of your mat is or a line, something like that, basically a 90 degree angle. Knee to ankle, ankle to knee. Use the block in front of the left knee if you need to, keep the feet flexed. Notice any differences on this side? Is it? Yeah. You're still able to bend that, that right hip more than you did in the beginning though, which is so cool. Okay, so fingertips forward, move with the breath. Take a deep inhale, bandhas, and then exhale. Just walk the fingertips forward or just stay sitting up. Remember that we're using strength and stretch in every pose. What's happening? Cramp? <laughs> ah, like your ribs are getting smashed? Your diaphragm maybe? Hmm. Yeah. Did it? Okay, so maybe just back out a little bit. Does that help? Okay. But I am curious. So start at the lower belly, gather at the lower belly, like below the navel, in and up. Does that make more room for you? Yeah, your body's like, what are you doing? All right, one more breath here. If you can go further, go further or just stay where you are. Yes. And then inhale, come all the way up. Straighten the legs out once again, just kind of bounce the knees this time. We're gonna do a Janu Shirshasana prep pose. Normally we do Janu Shirshasana A, which is this, but today we're gonna do Bend the right knee and bring it behind you. Bring the foot behind you. Try to get the foot as close to the butt as possible. Will that work for you? Okay. And then we want the knees to be as separated as possible. And sometimes the foot doesn't like this because it's not used to being stretched in the front here. No, it is flat. Mm -hmm. This left foot is gonna be flexed though. Now, if you wanna use a block on the inside of the leg or a blanket, some kind of height, if you have tight hamstrings, you might need to use this, maybe not. We're facing forward, because what we're gonna do, this ends up being like a revolved, you know, side bend. Left arm is gonna to come to the inside of the left leg. Forearm facing up, palm facing up. Yep, and you separate your knees a little bit more, yes. We good here? Okay, rotate the right shoulder back. So you're coming into a twist now. We have a side bend, a twist. Inhale the right arm up. And then exhale, start to lean to the left. So you're opening up the right side of the body. If you feel like your arm can go all the way to the floor, go all the way to the floor and press the left arm into the left leg. Oh, look at you. Okay, so if you can reach the toe, because bicep is to ear, but if you can reach the toe, start rotating the right shoulder back, opening up the chest. Yes, good. And um, Liz, your forearm could probably touch the floor. You could probably remove, yep, sure can. Press that arm into the leg. Good, Allison. All right, we're gonna take one more breath here. So eventually this left hand, ends up grabbing the leg. Yeah. One more breath. Inhale, come all the way up. And then other side. So be careful when we're transitioning. Remember, use your hands to help your legs out of this. Let's do the other side. Bend the left knee, close the knee joint first. Bring that left leg behind you. 
You wanna start out with the block on the inside of the leg, make sure your knees are as separated as possible. And so my torso is facing the middle. Yeah, that's how we get the twist. Bring the right forearm down. Yeah, I would start with the block just to make sure you're good, Alexis. And then rotate the left shoulder back, inhale the left arm up, exhale, lean to the right. Good. And just keep reaching. Notice any differences on this side. Alexis, you could probably grab your shin with the right arm. Yep, just grab it. And then just keep rotating the chest open towards the ceiling. You might be closer to your toes than you think. Allison, it looks like you're pretty close. You don't wanna force it obviously, but yep, keep the foot flat to take it. You, your toes, your fingers just went beyond your toes actually. <laughs> there you go. Take another breath. So one last thing, okay? Cause are you squishing your right lung? Okay. Yep, that's fine, but don't reach it. So last thing, the right side of your body is getting crunched right now, right? So use your breath to try to open up the right side of the body. That small, yeah. Inhale, come up. Good. All right, bring the feet together, bottoms of the feet together. Inhale, get tall. Exhale, keep a flat back for this first one. Chin towards the floor, shoulders back. Inhale, come all the way up. We're gonna exhale and actually curve the spine and drop the top of the head towards the feet. So going down again, but this time we're putting the back into flexion. Let everything hang. Except the shoulders, of course. Shoulders are still away from the ears. <sighs> Great, now your diaphragm is like angry. <laughs> it could be. Mm -hmm. Inhale, come all the way up. All right. One last twist before we move on to hands and knees. So grab your strap if you have one. You might not need one. And if you, it, like, if you don't have one, it's totally fine. Our knees are gonna be bent and facing to the right, like a straddle. And so you can stay here and do a twist, or you can bring this right foot on top of the left thigh and do it this way. Yep, and that is fine. Remember that we're rotating from the thoracic spine, so the middle of the back. Yep, good, I love good pops. So knees are facing to the right, we're rotating to the right. You can look to the right if you want, but the chin can stay right over the heart too. One more breath here. Exhale, come back to center, switch legs. So either stay in that straddle where your knees are to the left. And this is obviously a big hip opener, right? So yeah, big hip opener. And then eventually we start reaching for the toe and doing that. Yeah, which you can use a strap for, but today we can just do the twist too. Inhale, lengthen, exhale, revolve to the left. Release the tongue away from the roof of the mouth. Soften the throat and the jaw. See if that allows you to rotate a little bit more. See where you might be gripping. And then exhale, come back to center. Good. Let's go to hands and knees after you unpretzel yourself. So we're going to be doing a lot like your legs are gonna work once we stand up, just a heads up. So we're gonna be doing, doing some stuff to prepare for that. Let's just begin with our cat pose or Vitalasana. Be sure that your hands are set up properly. Spread the fingers, wrist creases are lined up with the top of the mat. You're pressing the roots of the fingers or the palms. Good. 
Knees are hip width apart. Inhale, lift the tailbone, lift the gaze. And on your exhale, arch the back, drop the head. Push the hips towards the face. Be sure your head is dangling here. And then inhale again, drop the spine towards the front of the body. Move with the breath. Exhale, arch. If you wanna add a little bit of movement to the shoulders or the hips, you can, but otherwise just continue going back and forth with the pace of your breath. This is something that you can do with the eyes closed as well, if you'd like. Just feel the breath move through the body, feel the wave of the spine as you go back and forth. And we'll do two more rounds and then meet back at tabletop, the flat back. Okay, so here we go. We're going to curl the toes under. We're moving right, we're moving right along. Hips up and back, downward facing dog. Uh, I was like, oh man. Okay, so once your hips are up and back, ears are lined up with the inner arms. I'm gonna move my mat here. Start to pedal the feet out. And we know that downward facing dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana is actually a spine lengthener, but the second benefit is that it can stretch out the calf muscles and the backs of the legs. This is why it's okay to bend the knees in downward dog because we're really just focusing on the spine. So be sure your hands are lined up, curl the buttocks up towards the ceiling. Once you stop your pedaling, find some stillness. Push the floor away from you, shift your weight back into the hips. Good. All right, right leg is gonna come up. So three-legged dog, you can point the toes, soften your left heel towards the mat. Stay here for just a moment. We're gonna come into pigeon. So you don't need to know what pigeon is from here. <laughs> I'll guide you. Bring the right knee forward towards the front of the mat. And it's like you're bringing your legs into the number seven. So scooch the left leg straight behind you and then start to soften the hips down. Most of us are gonna have our heel in the groin, but if you feel like you can start to bring the leg up a little bit, that works too. If your right buttocks is really far, yep, away from the mat, you're gonna to wanna to put a blanket or a block under that right sitting bone to support you. We're all staying up here for just a moment. So lift the chest, get the ribs away from the pelvis, shoulders back. Good. And so we're trying to get the hips as parallel as possible to the floor. You guys look pretty good. And then you can uncurl the back toes. Yep. Yeah. Press the top of the back foot into the mat, lift the leg and shift your hips so they're even with the floor and then settle back down. Yeah, now you can come down to your forearms if you're ready for that. You don't have to come down any further. You can stay on your hands. What we're looking for in pigeon is a neutral spine. So the next is just an extension of the spine. The next stays long. We use a block to support the forehead maybe. We soften the heart towards the mat. So shoulders back, bring the inner edges of the shoulder blades towards each other. And just breathe here. If you feel like you can come all the way down, you can go all the way down. Stack your fists, maybe rest your forehead on your fists. Is it okay if I put my hands on you guys? Okay, so I'm just gonna soften, yeah. And see if you can soften here a little bit. This is good. Do you feel a stretch here, Alexis? 
Okay, well, I'm still gonna give you a little bit of pressure. You tell me if it's okay. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay. See if you can bring your shoulders back a little bit more. Yeah. You're good now. You're yeah, you're good now. Go ahead and inhale, lift the head. And then start to bring yourself back up to your hands. Transitioning out of this safely is important. So curl the back toes under, lift to the back leg first, and then very slowly come back into downward facing dog. You might feel like that right leg needs to stretch out or rotate the hip joint. Just do whatever feels good before we move on to the other side. And then bring the left leg up, same thing here. Left leg comes up, right heel comes down. Good. And then bend that left knee, bring it towards the front of the mat. Uncurl the back toes and scooch the right toes back as the left knee comes forward. Settle the hips down nice and even. Take a few breaths here. Lengthen through the crown of the head first. If you're feeling any kind of pinching in the thigh area, okay, because you could rotate this left thigh out with your thumb and that might give you some more space. Go ahead and come down to forearms when you're ready. If you need any support under that left sitting bone, go ahead. And so while you're lying here breathing, do a body scan. Notice the areas in the body that are tight and give them permission to let go. The hips are our junk drawer. They get all the leftover emotions. You know, the pelvis is the biggest bone in the body. So a lot goes on in that area. Sometimes we have to bring our awareness to the pelvic area and consciously soften. Like our body doesn't always do it on our own. Sometimes we need to actually you know, zoom in in that area. I don't know why the word is eluding me. Zone, zoom, those are not the words I'm looking for, but hone in, yeah, that might be what I'm looking for. <laughs> Either way, soften the hips towards the mat and breathe. Major stretching going on in the lower half of the body, but the upper half of the body is still working. The shoulder blades are still active. The shoulders are away from the ears. We're here for three more breaths. On that third exhale, start to lift the head. Come back to your hands slowly. Curl the back toes under to lift the knee and then slowly bring yourself to down face dog. Pedal the feet out, rotate that hip, whatever feels good. And what you can even do is come up onto the toes. You can drop the hips to the right and to the left. Sometimes that feels good. And then we'll move on by looking up towards our hands and stepping forward. Try to do one big step or as minimal as possible. Yeah, which is fine because maybe last time it was five. All right, we're gonna inhale and come halfway up. So hands on the shins, flat back here, lengthen through the crown of the head. All four corners of the feet are pressing into the mat, shoulders are back. If your back feels vulnerable here, slightly bend the knees, but otherwise I'm gonna encourage you to use this 
as you know, strengthening for the back. Inhale, bring the arms all the way up. Palms together, exhale, hands in front of the heart. We'll drop the hands, come into mountain pose. And I'm gonna have you do two rounds of sun salutations, and then we're gonna move on to chair. Not chair pose, but using the chair. So get nice and even, reach to the crown of the head. Inhale, bring the arms up. Exhale, fold, bend your knees if you need to. Inhale, look up. Exhale, step back, lower all the way down, chaturanga evenly to the floor. Elbows kiss the sides of the body, good. Inhale, come up to an upward facing dog. So legs come up, press the tops of the feet. So legs are not touching. No, you got it. All right, curl the toes under, downward facing dog for five breaths. <laughs> One. Two, deep breaths here. Three. Four. And five. Inhale, look up, get to the front of your mat. Exhale, fold. Inhale all the way up. Palms together, exhale, hands in front of the heart. Back to mountain pose. One more round. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, look up. And exhale, step back, chaturanga. Elbows touch the sides of the body, evenly lower to the floor. Uncurl the toes, inhale, lift to an upward facing dog. And then exhale, downward facing dog for five breaths. You can choose child's pose too if you want. One, you can step in, Liz. Yeah, two. And then curl your butt up a little bit towards the ceiling and see if you can still keep the heels down because you're pretty good there. Three. Yeah. Four. And five. Inhale, look up, step forward. And exhale, fold. Inhale all the way up. Palms together. Exhale, hands in front of the heart. Okay. So grab your chair or your couch or whatever. And we want to have the tall part, and it really doesn't matter. Just if you have a chair, the tall part is going to be facing you. And so we're going to be working on warrior three. We're going to be doing it like a couple different ways. The first one, really focusing on the fact that this is an internal rotation of the legs, right? So a lot of a lot of the times what happens with our warrior three, let me try to get an angle here, is that when we start to lift this back leg, we start to also lift the right hip. So what we wanna do is keep that right hip down. And that's what the chair is gonna help us with. So it's gonna keep us honest, right? So if I'm holding my chair and I get far enough away, I plant my left foot, I keep my toes pointing straight down as I lift. This is about as far as my legs are gonna take me today. I could certainly go higher, but I start to lift this right hip. And even if you do go higher and start to feel that right hip, just see what it takes muscularly to bring it down. I don't care what's happening with your, your arms right now, okay? Good. So be sure that right foot stays flexed, toes down towards the floor. Yep, so you're kicking out through the heel and see what it takes here. We're taking a good, I mean, we're gonna be here for like five good breaths. So your legs are gonna work. Keep lifting from the inner thigh and keep the pelvis parallel to the floor. Shoulders away from the ears, just breathe. Good. You can keep a micro bend in that standing leg too to help you out. Once you're done with your five breaths, just bend that standing knee and come back with both feet on the floor. Good, and shake the legs out a little bit. I feel like you could have gone a little higher. 
Yes. <laughs> yeah. That was good, Allison. Go ahead and do the other side. Start to lift from the inner thigh, toes point down. So you'll know if your hip starts to lift because your toes will start rotating out to the left and you want them to stay pointing straight down. Yeah. So Allison, you can actually lower your left side a little bit still and deepen the right groin. Yes, exactly, yep. Now engage the abdominals, remember your bandhas to keep that lower back from dipping. Mm -hmm. Try to take a few more breaths here. And then go ahead and come back to standing, shake the legs out a little. It's a lot of work, right? Okay, <laughs> totally, totally, man. Okay. So now we are going to um, bring our feet, toes touching the chair, okay? Trying to do, I mean, it doesn't matter where on the chair they're touching. This is just a guide to know that our toes are straight down. And then you can bring the arms into it. So arms are straight. So your leg might be a little bit lower here. Just kind of floating on the toes, but it's gonna keep your hips honest. And then your arms could be straight back if you'd like. But notice the work that it takes for that left leg if we're really keeping the internal rotation. Remember to engage the abdominals. Drop the right hip a little bit and deepen the left hip crease. And then come out when you're ready. Doing it like that is harder, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. All right, other side. <laughs> you guys are gonna really remember me tomorrow when you're late, when you're walking up the stairs like, oh gosh, that yoga. All right, so toes touching the chair. Remember, I mean, you can kind of see if I'm going into half moon here, that means I'm opening up the hips and I really wanna stay facing down, internal rotation. And something that's gonna help the center of gravity is just bring your awareness to the right hip crease and deepen it, yeah. So that right femur is grounded into the hip socket. Engage the abdominals, use them, use your, rely on your muscles here. And then go ahead and release. Yes. Okay, put the chair off to the side and let's do it without this thing. Let's see what kind of muscle memory we've gained here. All right, so beginning in Tadasana. Deepen the left hip crease, start to fold forward, and then bring that right leg back. You can keep your fingertips pointing back or you can come into full, warrior three. Keep kicking out through the heel and reaching out through the fingertips if the arm is forward or arms are forward. Keep a micro bend in the standing knee so the knee doesn't lock out. And then just come out of it when you're ready. Yeah. And we will try it with um, a block if you want. Start from the ground up. Let's do the other leg first, standing. So go ahead and bring that left leg up, arms forward. Good. And stay honest with this pose. Keep the toes pointing down. Try to lift the leg parallel to the floor. Good, keep the abdominals engaged to protect your back. Micro bend the knee. <laughs> and then go ahead and come out when you're ready. Okay, so if we are using, instead of using a, a chair that's really high, we can use a block down here. So go ahead and get your block or not, which is fine. So if you're this low, see what you can do with lifting the leg to get the leg parallel. Yeah, you can go on the tallest setting if you want. 
So the lower you go, the more likely the right hip is gonna to wanna to go higher, right? Breathe through it, keep a micro bend in the knee. Both of you have your knees locked out, there you go. And then bend both knees to come back to standing safely. Good. How is that, Allison? Are you saying, yeah, I know when my teacher does this with me, I just get, I start to get really irritated. Like really, one more time, one more time with the legs. All right, do the other side, left leg up. Lift your left leg from the inner thigh. That's gonna help you keep the pelvis parallel to the floor. Yep, you both, yes. So that was a good, that was a good cue for this side. It's harder though, right? <laughs> Kick out through the heel, keep lifting with the inner thigh. Yes. That's great, you guys. Take one more breath, bend the standing knee and safely come back to standing. Oh yeah. All right, put the blocks off to the side. I like the little heart on your block. I love it. Two options you can do, we're gonna do tree pose. So we're all familiar with tree pose. You can do tree pose like this, or if you wanna stretch the hip out, you can come into a half lotus and do your tree like this today. Okay, so decide what you wanna do, either here, here. If your knee goes above the hip, then you qualify for this. Do your guys' knees go above your hips? Exactly, yeah. Good, yep, everywhere but the kneecap. If you wanna bring the arms out, go ahead and do that. And the same thing with this, we're just watching that left hip, we're bringing everything in and up. Have your focus point, use your breath. Doesn't matter how far the knee goes out, the hips stay forward. Take one more breath here. Bring your hands in front of your heart if they're not already. Bring the knee forward. Point the toes for three, two, one. Yeah, your leg was higher that time than before. All right, find your tree on your other side. Decide where you wanna go with it. Good. And when you find it, open up the knee. Your knee can open up more than that, yeah. Good. That's good, because I see you keeping the... Yeah, keep the yes, yes. Don't do that anymore. <laughs> Don't do that anymore. Good. And decide if you want to move your arms around or not. And the more you activate the bandhas here, the more stable you're gonna feel. Bring your hands back in front of your heart. Knee forward, extend the leg, point the toes for three, two, and one. <laughs> All right, separate the feet. If you guys wanna use a chair for this, you can, or actually I don't think either of you do. Just point the toes forward, hands on the waist. Legs are strong, inhale, lengthen, exhale, fold. So here's what we're gonna, was that a hip? Okay. Well, that's good then. This is what the strengthening is for. So once you're down here, remember the weight is shifted forward. Your elbows are pointing straight back. Drop the head completely. Good. Shoulders are still away from the ears, so the shoulder blades are still working here. And your head is dangling, just completely dangling. Yeah, Liz, you can separate your feet a little bit more. Yep. And now press your outer ankle to the inner ankle, out to in, to make sure that we're really using the leg muscles and the weight is not rolling our ankles out. You'll be able to feel it if it is. So see my ankles are out here? Outer ankle to inner ankle means that I'm really activating my adductors. Yeah, my inner thighs. Take one more breath here. 
Do you feel the difference? Lift the sitting bones up towards the ceiling. So those are activated as well, protecting the hamstrings. Inhale, look up. Exhale, bring your hands to your waist. Inhale all the way up. Good, exhale here. Pivot the right toes out 90 degrees. Keep a wide stance. We're coming into warrior two. So left hand to left hip, gluteus medius area. Once I press on that, my knee goes beyond my ankle. I need to scoot my toes out to make sure that that's not happening. So knee does not go beyond the ankle here. So here's what we're looking for for warrior two. And I'm gonna ask your legs to do this today, okay? parallel to the floor. The right thigh is parallel to the floor. Scoot your toes. Good. And that back leg is strong. The knee's gonna wanna bend, but this goes down. So left hip goes down, left shoulder back, extend the arm. Good. So instead of, because we have a tendency to wanna stick the butt up here. Yeah. You could come down a little bit even. Not your legs, your hips, your hips. Good. It looks great. One more breath. Straighten the right knee, pivot the toes in, pivot the left toes out. Good, bend that left knee. So you wanna have that, it's like a side lunge here. That's, it's good. So, yes, yes, oh, that makes me so excited. Okay, so now keep an eye on your left knee because it's gonna wanna cave in. Make sure that you keep it open over the second and third toe. Good, keep the right shoulder back. One more breath, engage the bandhas, yeah. Extend through your pinkies, pivot the toes in, bring the legs together. All right, cross the feet, meaning left foot over right. We're going forward, so just forward folds here. You can come down to a block, a couch, whatever. You can bend the knees slightly. I'm just gonna stretch the outside of the legs here. drop the head. Keep the shoulders back. Inhale, look up, switching. So uncross, now cross right over left and fold. We're trying to get that right foot all the way onto the floor, but it's the inner edge of the foot is gonna lift a little bit, that's fine. Try to drop the head completely, try to keep the hips even. Do you feel that on the outside of the leg? No? Back of the leg? Okay. Inhale, look up. Exhale, hands to waist. Inhale all the way up, nice and slow. Uncross the legs. All right, <laughs> come to the front of your mat. Inhale, bring the arms up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, look up. Exhale, step back. You're gonna come down to knees. Knees, knees, knees. Cross with the ankles, have a seat. Lie down on your back. Go ahead and hug the knees. So bring the knees up to the chest one at a time. Be sure that you're not using the back to lift the legs with the abdominals. You can even draw circles on the ceiling here. And we're gonna bring this into a twist in a moment. All right. So for a deep stretch for the legs and the back, drop your feet, cross your right leg over your left leg as if you were sitting in a chair and crossing your legs and then drop your knees to the floor to the left. Now you can extend the arms straight out. If your right shoulder is really high up, put a blanket or something underneath it. 
If it's not, then you're good. Or you, maybe you can even bend your elbows just to get an extra stretch in the pectoral muscles and the right side. <sighs> you guys made it. The only class where we do about five poses and it's over. But they're poses you remember. <laughs> Go ahead and come back to center, uncross the legs, do the left over the right this time, and then drop the legs to the right. Find your breath. Go ahead and bring the knees back up towards the ceiling, uncross the legs, straighten the legs, bring the arms overhead. Just take a long stretch here. Circle the wrists and the ankles. If your body needs another movement here, if you need another hug of the knees or another twist, go ahead and do that. And then we'll get ready for Shavasana. So if you want a blanket, um, something to cover the eyes, I'm gonna turn the lights off here. When you are ready, you're just gonna bring the arms down along the sides of the body, palms facing up. You want the hands about six inches away from the body so we're not touching anything. So if you do have some props nearby, get them out of the way. Separate the feet, let the feet hang open. We're gonna take three deep breaths here. So inhale through the nose as deeply as you can. Separate the lips and exhale. Again, breathe in, breathe out. Last one, gather up any leftover stress or tension in the body and let it go on the exhale. And as you continue to breathe in and out through the nose, feel the muscles soften as you exhale. Softening the muscles in the face. Feeling the shoulders and arms sink into the floor. Feel a release in the hips, the upper legs, and down out through the toes. Complete release of the whole body. For the next few moments, give yourself permission to be still and to just breathe and to just be.
Allow your inhalations to begin to deepen. And when you're ready, begin to slowly wiggle the fingers and the toes. And begin to bring more movement back to the body, maybe wrists, ankles, rolling the head back and forth. And then begin to slowly bend the knees one at a time. Maybe giving them a rock back and forth or doing whatever feels good here. And then slowly roll onto your right side using your arm as a pillow. We're just gonna take a few moments here and savor these last, last few moments of stillness. And take a moment to thank yourself for coming to your mat today. It's not something that we find time for. It's something that we create time for and we are worthy of it. Slowly press yourself back to a seated position. Bringing your hands together in front of your heart. Thank you for letting me guide you today. The teacher in me honors and appreciates the teacher in you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.